Christopher tomorrow? Not, not really. I'm going to call them up. So we have a minute to approve. Good evening. Uh, today is uh, Tuesday, October 10, 2017, and this is the uh, Housing Committee meeting. Uh, uh, body members tonight is uh, the Vice Chair Michael Plant and, and Mike Ortiz, Council of District A, and myself. Uh, we have a minute to approve, councillors, from September, September 11, 2017. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. We have a few items tonight on the agenda. And going for calling for the new business is item 33717 is the office of the city attorney acceptance of the deep on um, uh, lien of tax lien foreclosure south canal merrimack uh, paper site 6365 new registry condominium unit uh, 116 and 12. Arkham street unit uh, 207 and we have brian corrigan the assistant city attorney here to talk about that particular item good evening good. councilors um as my letter uh, to the council um, indicates, um, Chapter 60, Section 77C provides the city with a mechanism for um, taking title to tax lien properties um, uh, basically outside of the, uh, uh, the land court tax lien foreclosure process. Um, I provided a, a, uh, an excerpt of, of Section 77C in my, my cover letter to you. Um, this is basically, there, there are a number of ways um, for the city to, to collect um, uh, property taxes. Um, the traditional method is to um, uh, record a tax lien, and then if that matter is, uh, that tax lien is not paid within a certain period of time, we initiate foreclosure proceedings in the land court. That process can be very, very time consuming, cumbersome, uh, fraught with problems. Um, we get into all sorts of title issues um, if, if, if things are not done uh, perfectly by the book. We have cases um, sitting in the city attorney's office that are decades old um, that are, have not been closed for one reason or another. Um, among these uh, problematic cases are um, the South Canal Street uh, properties, which are the um, most commonly referred to as the Murray Mac paper site. Uh, which is um, comprised of, I believe, five or six separate tax lien parcels. Uh, the second one is uh, the 63-65 Newbury Street condominium, which is a 16-unit condominium that was established back in the 1980s. Uh, the building burned down in or about 1989 or 90, um, and the city has not collected a single penny of tax on that property since, since the fire, uh, basically. So we're going back um, 27 years on the Newberry case. The third one, 12 Acton Street Unit 207, um, is a condominium unit um, in the Acton Street condominium building. Uh, we have a, a few cases um, involving units in that building. This one in particular is owned by um, Stephen Lagana, who's a, a local attorney, an immigration attorney with an office right down the street here on, on Essex Street. Um, taxes on this particular unit have not been paid for many, many years. The case has languished in land court. 
Um, there are issues uh, involved that I don't want to get into too much detail uh, about because the case is pending. But I bring these matters to the council's attention. Again, I've cited the, uh, the section that allows us to do this. Um, it requires approval from the legislative body, which is the city council in this case. Um, tax lien uh, deeds in lieu of foreclosure in these particular cases um, will save the city a lot of time, aggravation, money, and allow us to take title to these properties um, so that we can make productive use of them, put them back onto the tax rolls. Um, each of these properties has its own individual issues. Um, the Merrimack paper site, as you are probably all very familiar with, um, is an environmental um, problem site. The EPA has um, uh, done a considerable amount of work there. There are pending Department of Environmental Protection liens. The Department of Environmental Protection filed a, a, a case against the, uh, the, the owner and obtained a judgment. Um, the city is going to work with uh, those um, state and federal entities once we take title to the property to clean it up and again make productive use. Um, give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Um, councilors, we have a di three, different, three different cases here. Yeah. Why don't we do the following? Why don't we split the, uh, the item into three and that way we uh, uh, talk about individually of each case. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to split the uh, item 33717 into A, B, and C? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Let's have it. So now we have a item 337 A, which is the first uh, case here, which is 6365 New Bedestry, right? Okay. Um, oh, give me one second. Hold on. Sure. Oh, no, South Canal is going to be the first one, yeah? So Merrimack Paper A, mm -hmm. Newberry B, and Acton C. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So 337B, which is going to be 6365 New Bay and 337C, which is the uh, unit ones, one, to six, 1 to 16 and 12? Uh, no, um, okay. units 1 through 16 oh, applies to the Arkham condominium. Street, unit 207, okay. Yes. Fine. So, councillors, uh, tonight we have a three, uh, a three members quorum, and um, we have a situation with one of the one of my uh, one of the councillors here that cannot talk about one specific uh, topic because you have a conflict of interest, probably, right? So, yeah, as I will deal with this issue because of the fact that I am needed for a quorum this evening, I will not be able to participate in the dis uh, discussion or any vote on 337A South Canal Street. Okay. Uh, but I will be here if, so, so that a conversation can take place with my colleagues on it, of course, so they can ask questions. Because if I leave, then we don't have a quorum and nothing happens, right? Yeah, fine. So, um, so I'll be quiet. I'll be silent on yeah, the first okay. one. So we're going to table 330 uh, with the, I don't remember that, no, sec, uh, the chair, subsection he wants to do, uh, but certainly he can engage in the discussion. I'm just not going to participate in the okay. discussion. Can and I have to stay here. You just leave it here. I mean, but if you can't vote on it, then we're going to need a, another member to sit in on the discussion and vote yeah. on it, correct? Uh, well, we can discuss the issue. We're just going to leave it here. Fine. And he's just going to be... And then be ready probably for when we have a fourth member. Or for the full council at some time has the authority for any matters to pull it up from a committee. Pull it up from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, okay. Can we just talk about that and we'll leave it here? Yeah. So, again, the, um, the South Canal Street Merrimack paper uh, site. So, item 337A. A. Um, is comprised of uh, several. Uh, parcels, I believe it's five or six, uh, all at various stages of the tax lien foreclosure process. 
uh, in the land court or approaching the land court. One of them is actually hasn't even been filed yet. Um, why these cases were not filed um, at the same time, I can't say, but the, these cases are rolled, they go back some time. Um, there may be an opportunity. Um, we've had some, some preliminary discussions with the, the owner of the property, uh, Mr. Petalaro, um, about the prospect of, of uh, obtaining deeds in lieu of foreclosure, and we think that may be an option. Um, one of the things that we have to uh, bear in mind is the fact that we cannot take uh, title to any property through this process unless it is uh, free and clear of other encumbrances. So in the case of the, the Merrimack paper site, um, we, we may have an issue there. Mm -hmm. But I'm asking for the council's approval to at least have this option, another uh, bullet in the chamber, so to speak, another uh, avenue for us to complete the tax lien foreclosure process. It may never come to pass in this particular case. The other cases, I think, are much more realistic. Um, but we would like to have the option uh, on the Merrimack paper site to explore the option of deeds in lieu of foreclosure to basically short circuit the land court process and just try to get everything accomplished at once so that we can move on, start working with the EPA, DEP to clean up that site and make it make productive use of it again. Let me ask you a quick question. Yeah. Uh, the current owner of that property, mm -hmm. who is that? Is? Who is, the, who is the current owner? It is, uh, well, again, it's five or six separate parcels. David Petalaro and his LLC, which I believe is the Merrimack Street Redevelopment Company LLC, which is a, an LLC that has uh, not been maintained with the Secretary of State and I believe has been administratively dissolved. So there are all sorts of issues here with the legal ownership of the property, which again um, are issues that are going to um, cause us problems in the land court when we go to foreclose and try to take this, these, these parcels through the land court uh, process. So um, these cases are rolled. Uh, a lot of things have happened since they've been filed. Uh, Mr. Petalaro has basically, I think, moved to, to Maine. He's no longer in the area. Um, but I would like to have the opportunity to at least explore this option. And uh, if it's something that Mr. Petalaro would be willing to do, and if it's something that we feel legally we can do, and transfer a good title to the city. Um, that's something I'd like to try to explore. It, it's sort of like if you think about it, it's like settling a case outside of court instead of letting a judge or a jury decide it for you. We'd be basically taking title to these properties for which we are never going to ever see a penny from Mr. Petalaro. I mean, he's basically judgment proof. He's, he's not gonna be paying us any money. Um, so the idea is to try to take title um, to these properties, um, and once we do, then we can start with our uh, work with the federal government and the state government to clean up the property and, again, make it, uh, make productive use of it. Well, Councilor, there is any other question? Through you? Sure. So is Mr. Petalaro the previous um, person that was residing on the property in the trailer in the trailer to the best of my knowledge yes and you're saying that that trailer is no longer there and neither is he oh the trailer may be there and he may be there for all i know but i last i heard um, he's absconded to somewhere in upstate maine and he's no longer in the area but i think the trailer remains and someone may be living there i have no idea um, but the bottom line is this is a problem property. Um, we've got to do something about it quickly. The land court process um, is not very efficient. Um, it takes years to get things done in the land court. And this may be an opportunity for the city to, to short circuit that process and take title to these properties in lieu of the tax lien foreclosure, which is basically the equivalent of foreclosing um, except we do it much more quickly and efficiently and we have more control of it. So, that, I mean, that's really the idea. With all of these properties that we're dealing with, but this one in particular, this one has its own set of 
problematic circumstances, uh, which have been going on for years. Um, but that's, that's where we're at. And so the, the five or six parcels are owned by that one individual? Individual or his LLC, but if the LLC is dissolved, then it... It goes back to that. But it still, it still winds up being one unifying owner. To Excuse me? The, it's, only, it's one concentrated owner, regardless of what the label is. The, the, um, the, five to, the five the to six yeah. parcels yeah. are still running up to one individual. Yes, the properties that I'm focusing on here, uh, the former Merrimack paper mm -hmm. site, um, are all under basically the same ownership umbrella, the Petalaro Merrimack Street Redevelopment LLC ownership entity. So th those are the, the entities that we're dealing with. Um, those are the entities from which we would be looking for a deed in lieu of foreclosure. And if we can, can do it and make sure that we you know, have the proper title examination and verify the you know, legal existence and authority to sign the deed and so forth, then we would do it. Um, otherwise, we just keep pushing the cases through land court and hope that they you know, are resolved and uh, that we get judgment on them sometime before we are all no longer employed by the city because that's really what we're dealing with here. These cases are years and years old, in some cases decades old, and um, it's really unbelievable how long it takes to, to push them through the land court, so. And how much of the tax is owed on the property? Millions, what, what, millions. Like how, how much? Five million total. Is that a, an estimate? Um, about? That's about, that's a, that's a good estimate, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Councilors, uh, what, uh, and what will be the next step for this, pro for this process to come to be successful? So the next step, uh, assuming that the council authorizes the city attorney's office to um, uh, have this option. Um, we would then um, actively engage Mr. Petalaro uh, through his attorney. He's represented by attorney Bowers uh, from Methuen. Um, we, would, we would engage him. Uh, we would probably have, we would do um, our own title examination to make sure that the parcels are free and clear otherwise of encumbrances. Um, and then if it's something that we can do legally under the statute, um, we would then try to get Mr. Petalaro's signature on a deed or deeds. And if we get it, um, then that basically closes the land court process, tight tax lien process. We take the deed in lieu of the tax receivables. So Mr. Petalaro walks away um, he doesn't owe the city any more tax, but we get the property free and clear. That's what we're and trying to do. An estimate, how much that's going to cost to the city the to have this, this property ready uh, to build and to probably sell it to another, another um, to a, whoever? Oh, you mean to clean up? Yes. That, that's, that could be a, a, a problematic issue once we take over the titles of a property that is problematic right now no doubt we're getting into areas that I really wasn't prepared to discuss tonight but let's put it this way um, that process is going to involve the uh, the EPA the DEP working with the city there may be some grant money um, and, and I mean the city does not probably have the ability to to clean up the site uh, on its own so we're going to be relying on on uh, on funding from from those um, federal and state uh, entities, but Are we, we, we can't even start the process until we, we, we take title to the property. I mean, this is kind of a, it's a catch-22 here. Uh, we've got these land court cases that have been going on for years. We can't seem to push them forward. There are problems with them. And um, I'm trying to come up with creative solutions to try to move this matter forward so we get to the stage that you're talking about, which is dealing with EPA and DEP and trying to get that particular site uh, cleaned up and ready for um, for sale or development, whatever the city decides to do. I mean, there's so many things that probably could be done at that point. 
I'm just wondering, it, it's that, um, are we uh, putting the city into another issue that we're not supposed to, or I mean? Uh, putting into what? Are we putting, putting the city in a place that is gonna be worse than, than what it is right now? The city is, if we take title to a property through the tax lien uh, foreclosure process, which would include this deed in lieu, we, the, the, the basically chapter 21E exempts us from the typical liability that, that an owner of the property would have. So we are not responsible for the environmental cleanup um, that, that Mr. Petalaro is, is liable for at this particular time in his LLC. The city, when we take title to a uh, environmentally contaminated property uh, for tax lien uh, <coughs> purposes, we are not responsible for, um, for the cleanup. So we are n the city of Lawrence won't be responsible for the cleanup of that property if we take ownership of that property. If that, is that correct? That's correct. Now, bear in mind. And that's according to? That's according to Chapter 21E. I can provide you with the, the citation to this, this particular section. It's a, it's, a, it's a complex statute. But I'm telling you that as long as the city takes title through this process, and as long as we don't contribute to the contamination and we do the right things once we take control of the property, which is to secure the property and then work with the government to clean it up, we are not responsible for the cost of the cleanup. Can you provide that, that piece of legislation to put it on the record? And sure. Have it as part of that item 337A? Sure. Councilors, how are we going to want to move on this? Motion to table. Um, yeah, the council of plan won't be able to second it. So motion fail. What are we gonna do? Go to the next topic. Go to B. So it'll stay there. Oh, we're gonna leave okay. it here. I make a motion that we take document three thirty seven seventeen B. Now. Second. All those in favor, please say. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much, councilors. Um, like we have mm -hmm. item three three seven B, which is. Uh, 6365 uh, New Radio Street, and this is uh, the, con the, con uh, the um, condominium unit 1 to 16. So uh, what is the situation on that particular property? As I mentioned earlier, um, this was a condominium building on Newberry Street uh, that was uh, constructed back in the 1980s. It was a 16-unit condominium building. Uh, it burned to the ground sometime in or around 1989 or 90. Uh, there is no longer a building. Uh, it's a vacant parcel of land being used for parking and whatever else. Uh, the city has not collected a penny in tax on this property in the last 27 years, give or take. Um, we have uh, very recently um, uh, identified this property as one of our priorities. Um, I've done a lot of research. I've spoken with the Department of Revenue. We came up with a plan to basically revitalize our tax lien um, collection efforts. And we have uh, working with the assessor's office, the tax collector's office. We have basically reassessed the property going back to the early 90s. We've sent out bills to the record owners. It's still actually a condominium, even though there's no building. The property is owned by 16 different unit owners, they all actually own the property jointly. It, I mean, as, as if it were a condominium building. So how are we gonna take that, that piece of land if, they, if the 16 of them own it? We have to either foreclose on the individual ownership interests or we take deeds in lieu of foreclosure. I've had, I've taken phone calls from I believe five or six uh, of the unit owners who received bills Every single one of them expressed an interest in having nothing whatsoever to do with this parcel of land. They just want to give it to the city. So I'm here asking you for authority to basically implement this plan to get deeds in lieu of foreclosure from the people that we can identify who are interested in basically deeding the property to the city. Uh, Councilors, uh, there is any questions on this? It's very clear to me. I've got a question. So would you be able to provide to the committee or spe more specifically me, me the name of the, and the addresses of the property owners who have interest in this property? The property owners who have an interest? Correct. Oh, sure. Yeah. 
Did you, is it already in here? I just, no, I missed it's it. Not, there's nothing. Nothing here. It's yeah, just a, a plan. Okay. You mean the individual unit owners and where they sure. reside now? Yeah. That's right. I like to know who they are and, and if they. I, I prefer. I like to know if they live in my city, if they live in my district, or they're next door neighbor of mine. I like to know who these people are. I, I will represent to you, Councillor, that none of them do. They are all. They've all moved away. Um, some of them were investors. Um, every single person that I've spoken to was under the impression that some attorney or attorneys had resolved the case and basically that the city had taken ownership of the property back in like the early 90s. Mm. They were very surprised to hear that that never happened. So um, these people have moved away. There are some who live in New Hampshire. I believe one lives in Florida. Uh, I spoke with a woman from, I believe, North Carolina or Tennessee. Um, they're all over the place. It's been 27 years. Um, the ones we haven't heard from, they may be dead. So we may be dealing with, with heirs of those original owners. But I'd be happy to provide you with a spreadsheet of, uh, of the ownership. But I'm telling you that you, there, none you. of these are your constituents, none of these I, people. I believe you. I, just, I think it would just be helpful to have a name and address as well. And that's part of the record. And what? Part of the record here. Sure. Yeah, so if you can send it to the, to, Fine. The, to the committee or to us, that'd be great. Uh, so this is, so th there are three properties, three A, B, and C, right? But uh, do you s see any other, this tool being applied for anything else? Or why, why was this, uh, I can't talk about A, but B and C, why were these two taken as potential um, possibilities to use this deeds in lieu of foreclosure program? Hey. Any case that we have involving a tax lien is ripe for a deed in lieu of foreclosure. These particular cases are problematic for their own reasons. We already talked about 337A, so let's put that one aside. I think everyone would agree that property has its own major, major problems. This particular property, what we're looking at is having to file 16 tax lien foreclosure cases in the land court in order to properly foreclose uh, on, these, on these tax liens. Um, that's at a cost of about $1,000 per case, um, not, not including what we would have to pay to the Coppola law firm, assuming that they were the ones to take it on and they're doing all our new tax lien <coughs> cases. Um, not to mention the time involved, the tax lien foreclosure cases in the land court and the process in the land court, as I've mentioned, is fraught with, with problems. It takes a long time. We have an opportunity to try to get this property cleaned up now and back into productivity, back on the tax rolls, whatever the city decides to do with it once we take title to it um, and dissolve the condominium, which we have the right to do legally once we get, once we get 75 percent of the ownership. Um, that's, a, that's a topic for a, a, another day. That's something that Ms. St. Ange might be coming in to discuss with you in terms of an RFP. Let me try now. Let me try because I get that. I get that. I get that point. I All understand right. that. Uh, let me back up. How many? How much money in back taxes are owed for the, the Newbury Street condos? <coughs> um, it's it's not significant. It's probably. Um, I ran some calculations earlier today. The 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 individual units are um, outstanding tax for an individual unit is currently in, in the area of eight hundred dollars. Uh, bearing in mind that after 1990 or so when the place burned down, we're, all we were assessing was a vacant parcel of land. So um, the amount of money owed is not significant, but it's significant enough that, that people who have interest in the land don't want anything to do with it. They don't want to pay the tax. They don't want the land. They just want to be done with it. And so I think it's a great opportunity for the city to take title to this property, um, short-circuiting the land court process, which is expensive and time-consuming, and getting this thing back on to the uh, productive uh, uh, tax rolls as soon as possible. So I'm reading the 70, section 77C. Maybe I'm cherry-picking the line here. It says the procedure provided for the section shall apply only to property upon which there are no other liens or encumbrances other than liens of the city or town. So there's no mortgage company, there's nobody else that has just no electric company, nobody else has got any liens on this property? Some of the units have mortgages. Um, I have not yet gotten into whether <clears throat> they've been paid off. 
but, but I assume that they have been. It's been 27 years. Um, we, cannot take, we cannot accept a deed in lieu of foreclosure until we confirm that all encumbrances are, are discharged. <coughs> we know the encumbrances that are affecting the, these units. Um, if, if the council gives us the authority to start exploring this actively, then we're going to go out and we're going to start chasing down the discharges of these, of these mortgages. Because from every, every person who I've spoken to uh, who's contacted me, uh, uh, unit owners that is, um, when I mention the fact that there's an open mortgage, they all say the same thing. Well, that was paid off years ago through the by the insurance company. So the, the mortgages have been paid off, they just haven't been discharged properly. So it's a matter of contacting a bank, tracking down a document, and then recording it. And if we can do that, then we can accept the deed in lieu of foreclosure. There are some units that are not mortgaged at all, owned free and clear by the record owner. Those we can accept deeds in lieu immediately. And there are, there are a few of those. So um, it's a lot of work involved. I mean, it really is, but uh, this, is, this has been sitting for 27 years. I'm not, I'm so not, if we don't do this now, it's, it's going to be another 10 years before we, we, we get anything done here. Please don't misinterpret my question of trying to, um, yeah, no, trying I don't. to oppose it. I, I, I think that to give the city the tools to put properties uh, back on the tax roll, back to some sort of positive usage is, is long overdue. So I applaud the fact that it took you to become in the city attorney's office to discover this or bring this to the forefront, and now we're having a discussion, which leads me to my other, my, I think my last question on this, which is, uh, what is the intent for you for this for this item? Is this merely to educate us on this, or are you expecting us to take votes on all three of these and and have the city council uh, provide the authority to to the city to you to go ahead and participate into this deed in lieu of foreclosure process? The latter. Okay. So since that's the case. My only concern on that is, where is it permissible for us to say yes, you can do that? But then you find out that you, we don't, and we just discuss, of course, the various potential um, tax uh, lien or not tax liens, but liens on on the property. Do we need to before we take the vote make make sure that those there are no liens, and then we take it, or we say yeah, go ahead? Which which comes first? Because this is my first time coming going um, and dealing with this issue. Yeah, it's all new. It's new to all of us. I, I don't think it's been. Uh, this has hasn't uh, a process that hasn't been implemented by the city, or maybe if it has, it's been a long time. So, I guess what I'm looking for at this particular stage is the city council's feedback as to whether this is something you want us to start working on. Um, if you want to add a uh, an extra level of review to it, that before we record the deed, we come back and provide the council with like a certification that we've examined the title and we're accepting a deed uh, free and clear of other encumbrances, I'm happy to do that. I just don't want to start working on this only to find out that the council says, yeah, we don't want you to pursue this avenue. So, so uh, we could do it. You? My preference would be that you simply give the city attorney's office the authority to implement this plan and to start uh, taking deeds in lieu of foreclosure in accordance with the statute which means that the burden is then on my office to make sure that we don't take a deed unless we've verified, yeah. you know, which, which we're qualified to do. No, I understand that. I, what, I'm, what I'm concerned about is that since we're all so new at this, admittedly, uh, my concern is that I, I don't want to see a potential challenge down the road by someone saying, you mean the city council approved this before all the liens were extinguished? I mean, you did this backwards. You, there's a flaw in your process, and now you can't do it. And what I'm trying to do is avoid that potential. But you've just offered a potential, also a potential resolution to that, which is a caveat to our potential vote, which is to say, you know, something it's for you to go forward, you must adhere to all the, 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 the requirements that were, are within Chapter 77C. And when that is completed, when you have when you've met those requirements, then yes, you are now authorized to go forward. If we if we couch it like that, maybe that provides a potential. Uh, if I have no idea who these people are for any of these properties, and that they may want to come back, whatever the situation is, I don't know. I just don't want to see it get in the muck. And but I just want you to know if 
I, I support what you're trying to get done here. So you got one counselor. I suspect there's probably many others as well, but one counselor is liking the fact that we have this potential tool. This is out, this has been outrageous that these things have been going on for over 20 years, and uh, and and as we talk to talk about blighted neighborhoods and mm -hmm. what we're trying to do to to rectify it, whether it be alleyways or whether they be these kinds of parcels, let's this is action. So this is a good thing. So I, I in concept, I support what you're looking to do. All right, counselors. Is there any other question? I think for myself, I, I echo in some ways Councillor uh, LaPlante's concern. Um, I don't think that there's enough information in writing for me to make a decision for this to go up to the full council um, because, so we're saying that there's 16 units that previous people existed. I, I would want a spreadsheet to say, okay, these are the people, this is where they're at, and this is what the money that they owe. Um, and that, um, as far as the next step, making sure that they don't owe, uh, the, those individual units don't have mortgages, um, that's what Section 77C says. So, of course, I, I have no doubt that you're going to follow the letter of the law in that respect. So I have no question on it. I'm just, uh, I can't make a decision based on a line that says 6365 Newberry Street Condominium Units 1 through 16 um, while we were having a, a conversation uh, on Merrimack, I had Council of Plant pull it up because I'm like, where are those units? Where is this? What are you talking about? And so now I know it's the empty lot across the street from Bread and Roses. That's what it is. And it, it, it does. Um, that would, the ability to develop in that area would definitely continue to add to the stability um, there. I just, and, and I think that I'm basically 99% there, but there's not enough information. And I don't want you to go under every single rock, but there should be just a, a regular spreadsheet that says this 16 units belong to A through whatever the L maybe, is that what it is? <laughs> 16, A through L, and this is what they owe, and this is where we're, where we're headed, and this is who has a mortgage or who doesn't. That might be the extra, uh, but that, that might come once we've gotten through that second part. How is that gonna impact your decision to send this up? I mean, the opportunity is now in front of us to get this accomplished. I'm afraid that if we, we wait any longer, uh, these people are no longer gonna be interested in the deed in lieu of foreclosure process. I, I wanna start why moving. Would, why, would, why would you providing that to the committee um, in a week's time, all of a sudden someone's going to what, wanna rebuild their one unit on that corner lot? No, I, I, that's that's a fear tactic. I'm not interested. Um, all right. Um, good question. Do you have that those, that information with you? Probably. Do you have I the? Do have it? Um, I did. Do my, file file on this, to, to, to my file is huge. Which is huge, small. That small tidbit. I mean, uh, do you have? If you tell if you're telling me that if I should, if I provide that information now, we could actually move it up to the council. I mean, I I, I will go upstairs and grab it and let yes, Miss Saint Ange. Uh, Motion to recess? No, 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 let's move in. He's going I mean, upstairs. we have Liza here. Oh, oh, you want to table this and have Liza do it while he gets the other stuff yeah. to come back to it? Is that what you want? Yeah, let's okay. work she's, she's here, she okay. have all the items. Make a motion that we table uh, with 337.17b. Okay. Second. So you I can mean, go upstairs there's a second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it, thank you. Uh, we have item uh, 17017, disposition of uh, 175, 177, Newberry Street. You get it, right? You come back down. I come back down, right? So, item 17017, which is a disposition of 175, 177 Newberry Street. Um, Eliza, talk to us about this property. So, this is a, a small little parcel on Newberry Street. It's 1,742 1, square feet. We started the tax lien foreclosure on this in 1993, so. It's been a long time that no taxes have been paid on this lot. I, um, from time to time, I look at city-owned properties and I send letters to abutters when it's an unbillable lot like this. Um, the abutter behind the property contacted me and he's interested in purchasing the property for parking. Um, so the, this is a yard sale. Um, the sale price would be uh, $1 a square foot, which is $1,742. Um, 
It does have restrictions, which is um, in part to submit a, an approval not required for main subdivision plan, merging the lot, the city owned lot with the um, lot owned by the applicant. They must submit a landscape plan, a stormwater management plan, and the lot will be restricted to parking and green space only. Construction will not be permitted um, in the lot. Um, the third page here you see um, the subject property and the applicant's property. So um, it does slope down, so the That's parking will, mm -hmm. would just be up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not really going to connect in that way that it, it, uh, continuously he would have to park on Newberry and, and go down. Um, but he's here to, to go over those plans. Um, Liza, let me ask you a quick question. Mm -hmm. The other three pop property, that, that other two property that are adjacent to this one on, that, um, on Newberry Street, who owns those? The city? The ones next to them? So this one, it's not owned by the city. I checked, the, I, I, before we sell a lot, I always check the taxes to see if we have it in land court. Taxes are paid in full on that lot. Mm -hmm. And then the one next to it, it connects with that house. It's one, it's just one lot. Oh, okay. So the third one, the second one from the from the subject uh, property is is owned by the house, and the right next to it. Yes. Uh, is not owned by the pro uh, is not owned by the city. No. No. Who owns that one? It's uh, I don't have the information. I believe the first name is Olga. I looked it up again um, today. I forget Does her last name. Does the city have any process in court? In no. So the taxes are paid in full. Um, so there's nothing. Nothing else going on there. Let's say if the, if the property ha was tax delinqu delinquent, I would wait to merge the two lots and sell them together. But in this particular case, taxes have not been paid in there since at least 1993. So 34 years that we have not received any revenue on that lot. He's the current, he's nothing. What do you, um, how are you? Sorry, I was late. I got confused no, with the time. Just, it's totally fine. Just your name on your. Uh, 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 Nelson uh, Batista. Uh, my address is 170 Easton Street, and that property on Union Street, I own uh, 170 Union Street also. So, what are you planning on doing on the property? I'm gonna make a parking lot. Of how just many? Just to vehicles? put like four four vehicles in. It's a, it's a small, skinny, um, property that abuts to my property there. I I need to build a little retaining wall and. Um, four or five steps going down. So it's gonna be a little process. I would have to pull a permit and stuff for that. Councilor, there is any questions? Yes, this is my district. Sure. So where, so I, I've driven by the property. Um, I like to do my homework before we dispose of anything or get rid of stuff because information is, is um, important. Yep. And in turn, so when I, when I came here and I, and I checked it out, it does slope. Yes. It does slope. Um, and so your intent is for the entrance to the parking to be on Newberry Street, or somehow there's going to be an entrance on Union Street? Because I don't see it's, how that's It's going to be basically on Newberry Street, and then my tenants can walk down the little retaining wall and go to their apartments, because okay, there's no parking. Okay, so that's, what you, mean, that's yeah. what you mean by the retaining wall. Yeah, because it, it slopes down. I, I would have to re put exactly. a retaining wall. And so. and so in turn, with that, would there, so in turn, your creating of a parking lot would reduce parking on Newberry Street. Reduce or? Reduce, well, it would reduce it because there would need to be an entrance. Well, there's an entrance there already. I don't know who, who in reality, who. When I bought the property, I thought I owned it, okay. but then looking into it, but there is a gate there, and there are people that park their car in there and they lock the gate. I don't know who does it, but mm. for some reason, for years, I've owned the property like four years. Okay. There's somebody that parks there actually and locks the gate. There's a gate there. Actually, from the aerial, I see your car inside yeah. the picture. So, and, and they put a lock on it and everything. That's why I was like surprised. I thought I owned the property actually. And um, I looked into it and I, the city owned it. So. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know who parks there. They put a lock on it every night. Two cars parked there. You're going to have a little bit of an issue. <laughs> have you identified who I have no individuals clue. are? I have no clue. I don't. All right, counselors. Uh, I know there's all kinds of trash and stuff in there. Yeah, there, like there is also. I Clean it up, you know. And, and so what do you plan, what do you, how long is the, when do you plan to start the project? I was actually going to see uh, if, if the city sold me the property. I was going to talk to Santos Paving to see how, how 
maybe as soon as like a couple weeks okay, so to go in there and yeah and pave it and the intention. And, yes, that's and my intention. What is the effort that if any that does the city or if I can I'm your city councilor, well for your properties anyway. Okay. Um, nice to meet you. to help and communicate to these people that are presently parking there? Yeah, I would like to exactly know, like I don't know who exactly parks there, but they put a lock on it. There's like a chain and a lock on the okay. on the gate. There's like a steel gate there. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I don't know if that would be an issue, but. Well, I'm, I'm available to assist you in any way. Okay, great. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Uh, Councilors, um, this is a yard sale, 1,700. Um, Square feet. So, what's the? Do, do you guys uh, have any question or any motion to the table? I just want to make sure through you that that sure. the uh, the applicant, Mr. Batista, you're, you're aware that since you're working through the city council on this purchase, that there are requirements uh, and prohibitions uh, with respect to the property or restrictions. And so, uh, the way if if this committee supports it and it's supported by the full council, uh, you're only you you are permitted to do it as is directed in this uh, in this document. You cannot put structures on there. You can't do anything like that on I this totally property. understand. You totally get yeah. that. Okay, so you want to make sure you're aware because yeah. we don't want people to be caught off guard right. down the road a piece and say, this is my property. I can do whatever I want on this property. Well, no, we got no, right. you a pretty pretty sweet deal on these, not just you, but every time we go through the yard sale programs. So there's restrictions on there. So anyway, so you're, you're good with that. parking lot, basically. You got it. Okay, good. Just want to make sure you're with aware. With some green space? We can build, put some green space on the sides, yeah. I mean, a couple of feet on each side. That wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, because that's that's part of um, the landscaping plan yeah. and the water yeah. mitigation. Yep. And I think that, um, especially because that is also a, a densely populated area. Yep. Um, just keeping that and keeping a, the look of a neighborhood. Yep. Would definitely yep. benefit the area. We c I can definitely put some planners on the side or something. To make it look better. Okay. Um, Councilor, do you want the motion? Um, motion to approve. Send it to the full council? And, to the full, and send or it to the full council with, with a favorable recommendation. Second. Um, there is a motion on the table, properly second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, we send in this item to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Okay. So that means that our next meeting, which is going to be. Next Tuesday. Next, Next Tuesday, Tuesday uh, at 7 p.m. You're, you're required to be here in case the other city councilors uh, have any questions or concerns. Great. And if possible, um, if you could just have a rough draft of what yeah. you're intending for that area. That's fine. Normally we, we would receive something like that okay. um, for the full council because I know that the, the question of green space and what the intention is, especially with that slope mm -hmm. that's there, just to kind of have a visual to I can definitely make it happen, yep. Okay, All right, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Okay. All right, good night. Have a good night. Good night. All right, we have item um, 320, uh, 32317. It's a surplus declar declaration, 1416 Tremont Court. Um, counselors? I would like to um, keep that table. I don't... Table um, the deadline for the department heads is next Tuesday, so uh, unless you want to send it without a recommendation, I don't have the um, responses from department heads okay. yet. Motion to the table. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Item 32417 is a surplus declaration of, of uh, 119 May Street. Same with that. Motion to the table. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, Motion to resist. Second. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. The ayes have it.
All right, counselors. We have um, item 337A, uh, uh, 337B. Can I get a motion to? Uh, we already did that. We already did that. Oh, it's, it's, I'm no. at recess. Okay. No, we did that. We came out of recess. Now we need to get, take an item out of the table. Okay. We didn't do that. So, um, can I get a motion to take item 337B out of the table, matters? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right. All Council, right, as I provide you with two additional documents um, pertaining to 63-65 Newbury Street uh, condominium. Uh, the first, the, the, uh, the letter-sized uh, document, uh, it's a three-page um, list of the record owners of the, um, of the 16 units. Um, some of the uh, information on here is based on uh, some current research um, trying to track these people down, bearing in mind um, they've been off the, uh, the tax books and basically uh, no longer residing here for 27 years. Um, we have received correspondence from a number of the unit owners to whom we sent bills. Uh, some of these folks, though, have not responded, so it may very well be that we do not have uh, um, correct addresses or current addresses. And again, it may be that some of these folks uh, have passed away um, but nonetheless, um, you have here um, the information concerning the record owners. So that's number one. Um, the second document, which is the legal size spreadsheet, is something that the, uh, the uh, tax assessor prepared, and that's basically a breakdown of the taxes owed for all 16 units going back, I believe, to 1994, um, breaking it down by principal tax interest total tax owed, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I, I did run the calculations on just one unit, unit 16, and I came up with a total of, of a little over $800 owed going back to when we last uh, us, you know, assessed and collected on these, uh, on these properties. So um, that's roughly what we're looking at um, in terms of tax owed. These are the people who we're dealing with. Um, I've received communication from several of them expressing an interest in deeding the property to the city and being done with their interest in it. Um, I'd like to start moving forward and um, actively pursuing these folks, getting them to sign deeds, and, and trying to track down some of the other folks. Hopefully they'll have the same response. Uh, once we get 75% ownership in this property, we can uh, dissolve the condominium. Uh, then we can partition the land and, and go through some legal maneuverings, but basically the, the goal is to take title to the property mm -hmm. and be able to do something with it, whether it's municipal, a municipal use or maybe selling it to some developer to build affordable housing. Again, that's, that's a topic for a different, uh, different day. I'm just trying to get the city to that point where we can actually have that discussion. All right, councilors, I think that we have um, received um, uh, sufficient information to be able to send this to the full council. Uh, and be able to discuss it at that level to start the process. I think this is an, an, um, a way, um, a good way to, to, start a, to start a process that it might be a little difficult. I'm definitely supporting this, this, type, this method and I will definitely would like to um, discuss any um, other possibility that we can help. Um, Councilor, if there is any questions for this item? I'm prepared to make a motion. Councilor Ortiz, do you have any questions for this item? No, I think that having, I think that having the information and uh, the background information is definitely um, helpful. I think that there are many owners here that are in Massachusetts, um, and as you continue to contact them, and we go through this process, they may decide not to. They may say that this might be a lucrative um, thing for them in the market that we're in to say, hey, $10,000, $12,000, I'll pay all those taxes, develop and, and make um, a pretty penny on it. Uh, but that's just supposing. But at least we have here the full information that's before us. I think that before we ever take a vote, yeah, as a city council, we should have all the, 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 the information um, so that we're making an educated decision. All right, thank you. Can I have these two, docu two documents uh, for the record as well? 
of item uh, 337B. All right, great. Uh, Councillor, what's the motion? I'd like to make a motion that we send this document up with the fable recommendation with the following language that um, that the uh, the committee uh, uh, the committee wishes that uh, before the city undertake this process that all the conditions within section 77 C be adhered to most specifically make ensuring that the uh, tax the uh, the liens provision is complied with before the city begins its process for the deed foreclosure, deeds in lieu of foreclosure program. And if you, you get all that, if you can't, it's probably on YouTube, you can watch it later. <laughs> you got the first half. Okay. But that's my motion and I can help you work that through to make sure you get that. Second. All right. Oh, um, there is a motion on the table, property second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. All right, we have item 337C, which is uh, 12 Acton Street, Unit uh, 207. Um, Attorney Corrigan, can you um, be brief us on this particular uh, Yes, um, I don't know uh, how many of you counselors are familiar with um, this particular property. It's a, um, I, I believe it's, it's, again, roughly a 16 unit condominium building, uh, oddly enough, coincidentally enough, uh, on Acton Street. Um, the, uh, the unit in question, Unit 207, is owned uh, of record by a, a gentleman by the name of Stephen Lagana, who again is a local attorney uh, with an office on Essex Street. Um, the, the land court case to foreclose on the tax lien began in 1993. Um, case began in 1993 and hasn't been closed. Um, so, um, how much they own taxes? That particular unit. It's hard to say, Councillor. Um, it's in the it's in the area of ninety thousand dollars, but. Um, Can you provide that for the record? Russell? I will get that information for uh, from the tax collector. Um, bearing in mind, uh, this property has has gone through um, uh, a number of ownership changes. Um, it also suffered a, uh, um, a significant fire several years ago. Um, it's uh, basically been gutted out, and um, uh, we haven't collected taxes on this particular unit in, in decades. So um, the taxes far exceed the value of the property. Um, we are probably past the point where we can realistically pursue the record owner uh, for personal liability because there are statutes of limitations that apply to those types of cases. Um, again, this one is one of those cases where we just, I took a look at it, it's been so long. Um, to me, um, it's ripe for this provision under section 77C. I've spoken to Mr. Lagana, he's willing to, to sign over his interest in the property to the city. Uh, we would have to conduct a title examination, again, to make sure that it's free and clear of encumbrances, but, um, you know, this is something that we'd like to pursue with this property. And um, to, I think, Council LaPlante's question, why these three? No particular reason other than these are, these are problematic properties, but I think if these, even one of these cases goes uh, well for the city with this deed in lieu, I'm gonna start trying to implement this procedure on other cases because the land court process in, in many of these cases is just not serving the city. Council, well. there is any questions on this? I have a quick comment. I just want to, I want to make a motion here shortly, if, if, the, if the, my colleagues allow me to. It'll be similar to my previous motion, and I'll say it slower if I can. It be, should be identical. Um, but I just want to make this one point, and I'm going to try to remember to say this, and I probably will forget, so I'm going to say it right now, because I will probably will forget at the full council level. Thank you for bringing this to the table. I know there was uh, oftentimes very city attorneys bring their talents and skills uh, to this position. Um, you, from what I'm listening to tonight, brought your expertise on a matter and are applying your expertise to the benefit of our city and utilizing a tool that you either you were familiar with through your previous life or something you discovered through research. Uh, either way, uh, you are using your talents uh, to affect potentially uh, three significantly problem areas uh, in our city and perhaps even more. So I want to thank you publicly through you, Mr. Chairman, sure. for uh, 
for taking uh, for taking this action um, this evening and for your work on this and other things as well. But I just wanted to say that publicly. So thank okay. you, Attorney Corrigan. Councilor Ortiz, do you have any question on this? Um, no, I think that it being in your district, you've shared um, how long it's been and you've given that nod. 90,000 is, is a lot for, is this is a condo unit? It's a condo unit. It's a but condo unit. And, 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 and is there a reason why that value was so high like that, just for one unit? I'm, I'm, I'm only asking because yeah. in comparison, there are 16 units. Owned by 16. 16 different people combined don't come up to the 90,000. So yeah. were the how were the assessed values different? If oh, you could just clarify that. That should be a question. Um, uh, the 63-65 Newbury Street condominium burned to the ground. So when we went back and reassessed, uh, we reassessed that that land at, at ba basically vacant, unbuildable land. Okay. Very, very cheap. Okay. Um, and so the one sixteenth of an annual tax bill for those is, is relatively small. Okay. This is a this is a fully functional condominium building. Um, you know, decent decent shape. I don't know what the what these uh, properties go for. I don't know what they're currently assessed at. Although, actually, yeah, this is fairly recent. Um, this property is assessed at forty two thousand dollars. Okay. So. So, you know, there is some tax um, that's accruing here. And bear in mind, taxes, um, unpaid taxes accrue interest at 16%. So it, get, it starts to uh, uh, increase uh, very, very quickly. We're going back to, in this case, very similarly, we're going back 27 years, I think, since the last time there's been a tax paid on this. So we've got 27 years of tax. At 16%. <laughs> unpaid I'm at 16%. I don't know exactly the formula for compounding. Uh, I could provide that information to you next time, or perhaps I could have uh, Mr. Vega or uh, tax collector uh, Oaks come in, but, um, or I could try to get the formula. But, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, if you don't pay your taxes for 27 years, um, you're going to have a very big bill, and the majority of that bill is going to be interest. Okay. There may be a relatively small portion that's, that's principal, and then the interest is just astronomical. Um, so yes, this one, this, this is one that just got out of control, was never solved. Um, we have the opportunity to work with Mr. Lagana and just try to take it back, um, sell it. There, there are people who have expressed interest in it, and people who live in the condo um, and other units, um, you know, and so it, it's- And get it back on the tax roll. Get it back on the tax rolls. Thank you so much. Councilor, there is any other question? I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we send this document, 33717C, to the full council with a favorable recommendation, providing that uh, upon the adoption of this, um, before the city attorney's office can begin uh, the process of the payment in a deeds in lieu of foreclosure program, that it could fully comply with section 77. C, most specifically paying attention to the requirement that there will be no other liens or encumbrances on the property. And I make that in the form of a motion. Second. Uh, okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. You good with that, Mr. Corrigan? That's, that's not gonna delay anything, I don't think. Not yeah. at all. All right. So, um, the motion now? Okay, thank you. Councillor, if there is any other item on the agenda that we'll let to speak. Oh, I just want to make a point, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, that I, I know we, there was a little bit of confusion. I just and I want I think that you've cleared it up. I just want to say this one more time, which is uh, the conditions uh, 27412, the condition of 77 South Union Street. Just as a reminder, uh, that we're looking to have a, a special meeting on November the 14th at 7 p.m. Uh, to discuss uh, those conditions and with the um, with the uh, individuals, uh, the fire, police, and special services yep. to be present. So it's not tomorrow, it's the, it's the 14th of November. Right. Do, are we, we send correspondent to every single one of them? Do you want to ensure that? I believe that we did. I believe that that was a motion in the, well, I have the minutes right here. I believe that was the motion in the previous one. 
I have, I have, I saw it. Yes. It says in our, in our minutes, Council of Plan made a motion to send correspondence to in Mr. Ruiz, Fitzpatrick, and Moriarty for an overview of 77 South Union Street. So the motion has already been made as in correspondence for that date and that time. Okay. So we should be fine. Councilors, um, is there anything else for tonight? No, sir. All right, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Guys, have it. Thank you so much. I feel like